Hi there, this is John from the Gadget Helpline videos and today we're going to be talking about the HTC Chacha. The Chacha itself is the first quote sport and keyboard handset that HTC have made. Quite frankly, it does turn a few heads. Um, people immediately associate the keyboard that's on the device as a Blackberry and will ask you straight away if that's a new Blackberry. The big difference is the full working QWERTY keyboard just across here, which has full, all the features you expect from an Android smartphone, but it has the touch screen as well to go along with it. So today we're going to be talking about a few of our pros and cons of using the HTC handset. We've been using it for about a week or so and we want to run through what we found out. Right then, we're going to start off with the pros. Uh, first thing pro and most obvious feature of the handset is the full QWERTY keyboard. Now we've mentioned it a couple of times because it's the main selling point um, and quite frankly it's brilliant. Uh, for QWERTY fans out there, you will absolutely love this. Um, the phone has a great customizable shortcut features on the handset as well, so if I press the FM button and that, you can take it straight through to the camera. Um, and to top it all, it's also got these great hang up and pick up keys either side, so that the slightly smaller screen size on the handset are easier to use when you're actually dialing in and out. First con will be the name of the phone, the HTC Cha Cha. The handset itself is brilliant, but the worst thing about the smartphone is explaining the name and having to explain it to people. After having to say to your mate, oh, what's this handset? And you go, oh, it's a cha cha. It's a little bit of an annoyance. Also, the name comes up in your Facebook and all the other feed information that you put it on there. So uh, it's pretty much always gets a negative reaction whenever you put something on there. Next pro, we're going to have to go with the integrated Facebook button on here. This is the first handset to have the Facebook button on there, along with its sister handset, the HTC Salsa. Um, basically, what it means is that a quick press from your home screen will take you through to your wall and you can post your thoughts and feelings to the world on there. But where it gets a little bit more advanced is when you're actually using it with some of your features on there. For example, if you're listening to music on your handset, you sit there and you play the information, you press the Facebook button, and it immediately goes to try and play the um, album title, the artist and the song title on your Facebook wall. In a similar sort of vein, you can go through to your pictures, scroll across here, find our Gadget Help Line logo there, and if you press the Facebook button again, it will try to post it onto your wall, and it will also try to post it through to a website. If you're sat on a website, press the Facebook button, it will then put it as through as a like and a link on your Facebook wall. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, whether or not you use it all the time is, is the question, but we like the feature and it's something that can really aid you sharing with your friends. Next con. Now this one's a bit of an odd one. We found the internal storage a bit small. There's a 512 megabyte uh, internal storage built into the actual handset, but when you start installing a couple of apps on there, it's download it, it does start to fill up quite quickly. Now being gingerbread, it's quite a large amount of data that's already stored on there, and you can transfer across things onto your memory card immediately, but when you transfer things onto memory card, a few features do get disabled. A couple of soundboards we've used and a couple of other features don't work with their widgets when you've actually got it still on there. It's a little bit of an annoyance because you do get constant updates on there and you know sometimes it's a pain to actually swap things around. But that's our next con. We're going to talk about the screen now. There's a couple of pros and cons associated with it. Obviously the screen's a lot smaller. Um, we'll start off with the Pro, which is the layout of the actual handset. Um, it's pretty cool. It's all in landscape mode. The handset itself has disabled quite a lot of features that are actually in the um, portrait mode for it because of the design of the actual handset. Um, things that are widgets that are on here and apps that are on here have all been shrunk down. It's made it a little bit easier to control, say from the main screen if you press and hold to change your apps, you can't move it into some of the areas and it's laid out a bit better. All in all, it's very good, it's very, very easy to use on the actual handset, especially with the QWERTY keyboard integration. A uh, slight con of it though will be the um, actual size of the text that's on the handset. If you've got poor eyesight or if you know if you like large text on your devices then the cha cha probably isn't for you because the handset is quite small, things are quite the text is quite small on here to use and sometimes it can be, it can be you know displayed in very small boxes here. For example the Android market if you're going through you've got a lot of text in a very small amount of space so any glasses or if text is an issue for you then it's probably not something for you to look into. Apart from the size of the actual text on the screen, the screen itself is brilliant. It gives you all the functionality of a normal touchscreen device. 
pictures and images and videos all look great when you're actually looking through them and it displays things very in very vivid color for example we're going to load up the obligatory angry birds go through here and this will show you what sort of colors are available for it now again this leads us into another con this handset is not made for gaming. The screen size itself means that some of the controls that are built into the actual games um, do cause a bit of an issue. If we wait until this just loads up a second, I'll go into a quick game and click on there. What you tend to find is that the screen is quite small. You can use it and it all works just fine, but by doing this you tend to either go off the screen or, as I've found out many a times trying to blow up them dastardly pigs, uh, tapping off the screen over here and then restarting the matchup. It's not really one for gaming, but you can do the gaming stuff on there. Altogether though, the HC Chat Chat is possibly one of the best hands that we've had this year. It's a great little phone for people who like to text, especially if you like to keep it quick and simple. On a quick note though, if you're prone to a couple of typos via the whole fat finger disease, maybe not the phone for you, but a great little handset either way. The ease of use of the QWERTY keyboard, the Android OS, the Facebook integration button and things like the camera, topped with the design aspects of the actual device, all make it a great addition to the HCC range. We'd buy another one in a heartbeat. This is John from the Gadget Helpline saying thanks for watching our thoughts on the HTC Chacha. For more information on the latest news, reviews, tech and videos, make sure you follow us on our Facebook page at the Gadget Helpline group, Twitter at gadget underscore helpline or go onto our website for the news. Thanks for watching.